Hey guys, welcome to week two of Sharing Jesus, where we're talking about witnessing to people in a world that has countless options. I'm really excited about this week where we're going to be just working through and working past some of the hesitations that we have um, and, and why we may not feel so comfortable in sharing Jesus uh, with other people. So I would just say, uh, take out a notebook, take out a pen, get your Bible out. We're going to go through a few scriptures today and just kind of lay out a little bit as to how we can move past some of these hesitations that we have very biblically. Uh, we'll go into that in just a minute. But first, let's start off in a word of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we come now before you. We're thankful for this week. We're thankful for another discussion and opportunity that we have, Lord, to look into your word and into your heart for us and for your people. We just pray now, Jesus, in these days that are to come, that you would give us a heart to share you, to witness to you, that you would bring to remembrance all the things that you've done for us and the freedom that you've brought into our hearts. So Jesus, we're just asking that you would bring um, people around us that are willing, that are looking, that are searching, Lord, and that we would go forth boldly and share your truth of who you are. We love you. We thank you in your precious name. Amen. So I want to start uh, start this session by uh, really confronting first the lies that we actually tell ourselves. And this is really one of the paths to freedom is when we we able to look introspectively and we are able to begin to unwrap the things and the lies that we may have taught ourselves, that maybe we have inherited from other people, that maybe even Satan has has planted within us and has, has us doubting uh, who it is that we truly are. And it's really not until we can confront these lies that we have ingrained within us, even from young ages, that we can start to experience true freedom. And then from that freedom, like we talked about in last week's session, from that freedom, then witness to other people, witness as to who Jesus is. But it's going to be really difficult for us to witness to other people. It's going to be difficult to share Jesus with other people as long as we continue to believe lies about who we are, about who maybe even God is. And so a lot of times what ends up happening is we begin to look at who we are. And in this whole idea of sharing Jesus we start to say, okay, what if this doesn't happen? Or what if they say no? Or what if they get really mean? Or what if that person isn't my friend anymore and they, they turn their back against me? And so what we, we end up doing is picturing all of these what ifs, looking at the situation as if Jesus isn't going to be a part of it. And I think that's the detrimental part. It's like, because we don't have a physical Jesus walking alongside of us, a lot of us struggle to realize that he is actually with us in those moments. And I, I think there would be something amazing that would happen, um, like in the church and in, our, in us, uh, if we approached sharing Jesus with others with this understanding that he is actually with us in that moment. So maybe that's a lie that you need to confront that like Jesus is just some far off thing. It's just kind of this like weird, spooky idea that you have to get this spiritual assent to. But Jesus actually said, I'm going to be with you. And he didn't say like, it's going to be all these crazy things happening. So I'm going to be with you and there's going to be a peace and there's going to be a settledness within our hearts. I don't know if that's a word settledness, but there's going to be that feeling within our hearts. And we're going to just be able to walk with him. And so I think we need to shift the paradigm of what if this doesn't happen to what if he shows up? What if Jesus were with us as we're sharing the good news about who he is? And so, again, I think we often come from the position of what we can't do. What we need to do is come with faith of what God can do. Right? We, we come with this idea that we know our own shortcomings. And that's true. We know our own hurt. We know what we've been through. We know the sins that we're struggling with. Better than anyone, we know what's going on within our hearts. But 
until we can move forward from that in grace and freedom, and until we realize that those things don't define us, we're going to fail to be effective witnesses to Jesus. That's just the truth. Until the Holy Spirit fills us with Jesus and, and can just completely eradicate those lies that we've told ourselves that you're not worthy to share this message, that you yourself don't even follow this message. Until we get to that place, we're not going to be effective in sharing Jesus. It's interesting, in Matthew chapter 19, uh, you see this, this account with a rich young ruler, and the disciples ask Jesus, they say, who can be saved? And basically, it's like this cry. They're like, realizing the condition of this man that was just talking to them. They're realizing the condition of their own heart. And basically, they're like, okay, Jesus, who can be saved? Thinking that it's almost impossible. And I love what Jesus says. He says, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Now you have to notice there, like, Jesus isn't just saying that to hype you up and be like, oh, you're invincible, go get him, like, go conquer the world. That's not what Jesus is saying here. A lot of times we take that verse out of context and twist it. What Jesus is saying here is salvation is only possible through God, through Jesus. So until we come to that realization that we in and of ourselves are not responsible, which means the shortcomings you have and the sins that you're struggling with, while we want to move past those and we're moving past those by the grace of God, those are not the things that define you. And those are not the things that make salvation possible or impossible. The thing that makes salvation possible is God. And we have to come to that realization first and foremost. So what I want to do is just take these next few minutes um, and just confront some of these common hesitations. So what I did is I took three from that survey that we did uh, um, together. Uh, I took three of the top common, most common hesitations that we had as a group. Uh, and, and we want to just walk through these very briefly. But I just want to say this as well. You have to realize um, that this is something that you have to take the time to work through. Okay, we're going to take a moment and we're going to go through these three hesitations and we're going to confront them scripturally and, and talk about them. And I know and I pray I've been praying uh, that that will just kind of release you a little bit in this time. But also you're going to have to take time after this video to work through and process through some of these things yourself. OK, um, I just want to share a really brief story. When I was in college, I had to take an evangelism course. I really did not want to take this because in my heart of hearts, like I'm not the guy that just goes out on the street and talks to everyone about Jesus. That's not my personality. But a lot of times we can hide behind like our personality as a way to be disobedient to Jesus. So it was like, man, this was an inner struggle to me. And so it came to the place where I had to take it this semester and uh, had to take this evangelism course. So I go ahead and do it. And the reason why I was hesitating to take the course was because I knew it wasn't just sit down in a lecture hall. I knew that there was a, an assignment, one of the class assignments, main assignments, that you actually had to go out and uh, witness to people. And like it was, it was a part of a part of this class, a huge part of this class. And so you had to go witness to people and then write a report on it and then kind of move on from there. So I was struggling because I didn't care about the lecture. I love the lectures, but I knew that I was going to have to actually go and put this to practice. And so within me, I was like, man, I don't want to do this. And the reason was because I was so conscious of myself and I was so aware of my own shortcomings that I was like, how am I going to properly do this and present Jesus to someone else? And honestly, I, I went and I did it and it was such a, a gratifying experience but also an experience that showed me that what sharing Jesus takes and what witnessing takes is risk it takes effort it takes faith that Jesus is actually going to do what he says he'll do and it takes an understanding that this isn't about me this is about him and I am covered I am washed under the blood of Jesus so because I have a new identity, now I can live in that new identity and bring that to other people, even despite the shortcomings I still have. Okay, so we got to get to that place. And so 
uh, we have to realize that this is the heart of Jesus. This is the heart of Jesus is to save people. In Luke chapter 19, it says, Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. Okay, so it's literally saying the, the, <laughs> the mission of Jesus coming here to earth is to seek and to save those who are lost. So this is the very position, this is the very posture, this is the very desire of God's heart, which means that the difficulties that we constantly have are difficulties that we're bringing on ourselves most times, right? It's like, it's like all these fears, all these worries, all these doubts, all these anxieties that we have in sharing Jesus with someone else isn't because Jesus makes it difficult for us to do that. It's actually because we're bringing these insecurities and these lies onto ourselves, so until we confront these hesitations, we're not going to be able to move forward into freedom. So we need to get into these hesitations to confront. The first one is the fear of rejection. I think this was uh, one of the main ones that, that was answered as far as our hesitations. The fear of rejection. This is huge. This is huge in my own heart as well. Um, we don't like to be rejected. But Scripture and Jesus himself says that we actually would be rejected as he was rejected. In John chapter 15, verse 18, Jesus says to his disciples, to his followers, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. So there's this idea, and it sounds super harsh. It's like, Jesus, what do you mean? Like, isn't this supposed to be about love? Isn't this supposed to be about acceptance? And Jesus is straight up. See, there are going to be people that hate you. And we have to recognize that. We have to process through that. And we have to realize that that is, is something that is probably going to happen to you. And I, I, there's, there's an idea. I, I don't know the exact quote. I'm going to butcher it a little bit. But like, if, if someone, not necessarily hates you, but if someone doesn't disagree with you or someone will say, like Jesus said, if someone doesn't hate you, you're probably not doing it right. Right? Like Jesus is saying, there is going to be pushback. If you follow me, there's going to be pushback. He goes a little later on in that chapter as well to say, though, there are going to be people who are going to follow you as you follow me. So there, there's that twofold idea, but he wants you to know that that's going to be there. You will be rejected. So if you have fear of rejection, you're going to have to move past that. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 11, there's this idea of, of Jesus, again, going through this idea of that Jesus was rejected himself by people. The very savior of the world. So if he was rejected, you can expect to be rejected. In Acts chapter 4, verse 11, uh, Peter's speaking. He says, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you. Now he's speaking to the Pharisees. He's saying, you guys rejected him. It says, the builders which has now become the cornerstone. So it's kind of this flip on his head. Even though these people throughout all the time had rejected Jesus, he now is actually the foundation, the cornerstone. It goes on to say, there is no other name under heaven by which we all can be saved, which is Jesus Christ. Okay. So we have to come to this realization. Okay. I have a fear of being rejected. Why is that? Why is that? Right. But then also come to this place of understanding is the fear of one rejecting me, causing me the sacrifice of the possibility that even one would come to Christ. Okay, so is the fear that someone may reject me paralyzing me to share the message where even one may come to Christ? Because here's the truth. Jesus says, right? He says, I will leave the 99 for the one. That's what happened to you and I. Jesus came and pursued us. And so for us to say, uh, well, yeah, maybe not. Maybe, maybe I'll wait for, you know, I don't want to be rejected. And so hopefully they'll just come by like the way they see me living. That is, that is selfish thinking because we're trying to preserve our own selves and not share that message with others. So I want to say fear of rejection. What position are you coming from? We talked about this a few weeks ago when we were talking about prayer, right? What position are you coming from? And we actually end up cheating ourselves out of being a blessing to God and by God because we're living as foreigners in a land where we are children. 
Again, that's that whole paradigm shift. We fear being rejected if we're not secure in the love that we have in God. So if you fear being rejected, first you need to check, are you secure in your relationship with Jesus? Because if you're not secure in the love that God has for you, then you're never going to move past the fear of rejection. So that's the first thing. What is your position? You are a child, not a stranger. You are loved and secure. So even if others and everyone else rejects you, you are still receiving the complete, full love of the Father. Okay, the second one, second hesitation to confront is not knowing enough. Okay, not knowing enough. I want to confront that fear with a question. Are you speaking through yourself or are you allowing God to speak through you? We have to come to this understanding that we as people, when we're talking and sharing the words of Jesus, when we're speaking from the the word of God, whatever it may be, we're not talking as if it's from our own intellect, our own understandings. We're talking as actually messengers of God. And, and it comes to this place where our words are more and need to be more than just giving information. Because what people need is not more information. What people need is transformation. We live in a world full of information. We know that. Constant internet, constant Google, whatever it is that you want to do. We live in the world of information. What people need is transformation. Now, at the same time, I do want to say that we constantly need to be growing. We constantly need to be learning, okay? If you're a a Christian, you're a follower of Jesus, you always need to be moving forward in what you know. There needs to be depths that continue to be uh, drawn from. Uh, So so we need to always be learning. If you think that you're good, like, I, I know enough to get me through, like, this season. I know I'm good. Like, Jesus, thank you for what you've given me, but that that's that. Uh, you're wrong. (laughs) And what actually ends up happening is you don't move forward or you don't even stay in the same place. You actually end up moving backwards and turning your heart to something else. Okay, so we have to understand you will need to constantly be learning, but mere information is not the end goal. Mere information is not going to transform hearts. In John chapter 4, verse 39 to 42 Uh, There's a really interesting account where really quickly Jesus meets this woman at the well and tells her about her whole life and her whole history. And basically she goes to tell these other people in her town like, hey, yeah, I think this guy's the real deal. This dude is a, a, a prophet. He knows all. I even think he may be the Christ. He may be the Messiah, the chosen one to save us from our sins. And he has told me everything about my life. And then we read here in verse 39 of John 4, many Samaritans from that town believed in him, in Jesus, because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and Jesus stayed there two days. And many more believed, why? Because of his word. And they said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. So all of this to say, right, this woman gives a testimony pointing to Jesus, and they, they come to see Jesus because of the testimony, but then they come into relationship with Jesus, not because of her words, but because of Jesus' words. So understand that our words... Sharing Jesus, witnessing to people, is is simply pointing them to him. And he is the one who does the work. Okay, so, so her words pointed to Jesus. He was the one who did the work in the end. And then the third one I want to confront is lack of confidence in self. I'm just going to do this quickly. Lack of confidence in self. And we've kind of touched base a little bit on this. But I just want to go out there and say our confidence should never be rooted in ourselves anyways. Yes, we need to have confidence. Yes, we need to be be willing to go and step out and say something. But at the same time, it's not rooted in who I am. It's rooted in who God is. And what happens is we put an emphasis 
on what we can do, right? We put an emphasis on, on what we're able to accomplish when in reality, we have to realize that in and of ourselves, we can't really do anything. There's a pastor who told me some really good ministry advice a few years ago. He said, you cannot change people. He said, allow that burden to free you. You cannot change people. Only God can change people. But at the same time, we do have a responsibility to point people to God, right? Like, it's not going to just magically happen where it's all of a sudden like everyone's going to be walking up to you and asking. There may be moments like that. But what, but what we have to understand at the heart of this, we cannot change people, but we still point people to God. And that is our confidence. Our confidence is as children. So until we come from that position, we're really going to be helpless in and of ourselves. We, we, we have to realize that we have nothing inherently within us to give. What we have to give that comes from within us is confidence in who God is, is living out the identity that Jesus has given us. So all of this to say, um, we, we coming to this place of witnessing, and this is kind of an overarching idea for all of these, witnessing is not about what you can do. It's not. It's not about your intellect. It's not about uh, who you are or, or what, what you have to offer or what you don't have to offer. Witnessing is about what God can do. We are instruments. Right? We're the people that are able to point to the right direction. We have this spirit within us that we're able to speak powerful words and powerful testimonies to other people. And so we have to come to the realization that without God, this is all impossible. But with him, all things are possible. So I just want to finish with this last thought that, uh, you know, oh, this feels so uncomfortable. Oh, I'm hesitating. But really feeling uncomfortable in sharing Jesus and witnessing is a part of the journey. Um, it, it, just because it doesn't make you feel comfortable doesn't mean that it's wrong. Okay, so we take we take discomfort uh, especially in our society, like discomfort is a bad thing. If it's dis if it's discomforting, we move away from it and we we shelter ourselves in place so that we don't have to uh, don't have to deal with that thing. But in some cases, uh, it's actually what we need to be pushed out of the comfort zones that we have created. A lot of us know that the things that we have made comforts in our lives are not actually the right things. So if that's true, and we know there are certain comforts in our lives that are not leading us to life, but leading us to death, why would we sacrifice that? Or why would we say that this is a bad thing? So discomfort is not a, a, a part of the equation that we have to look away from. Or like all of a sudden, yeah, we have to find out the way to make witnessing not weird. It is always going to be a little awkward. Like when you, tar when you start when you start talking to people about salvation, about their soul, about like, hey, like this is what God did for me. Like, I believe he could do the same for you. It is going to be weird. Okay, there is going to be an element of, oh, this is a little uncomfortable. But then when you break that barrier and you make yourself a place of confidence in who God is and confidence in your identity in him, then you're able to move forward from that place. Okay, so it's okay, I think, to have certain hesitations but it's not okay to stay in those hesitations and use it as an excuse to inactivity. Okay. We have to pray like, God, I do not want to hide in my hesitations. I actually want to expose them and move forward and sharing who you are. And th this last point, until we learn to die to ourselves, we're never going to learn how to live unto Christ. Until we learn how to die to ourselves, we will never learn how to live unto Christ. In Galatians chapter 1, Paul writes, If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. And so I, I'm praying for you guys. I pray that you will work through this and process through this. I pray the peace of God. I pray the identity of Jesus in you. I pray the Spirit would fill you in these times as you're looking in His Word and looking through these different things and processing through it. But bring it before Jesus. And I just want to, to encourage you and, and remind you that in these next weeks to come, we also are going to take some time to take the risk and actually invite people to come and hear the story. Uh, of Jesus. And so just be thinking of those people that you may have written down last week 
uh, of who you're praying for to come to know Jesus, that you will have the power, the authority, the confidence, and the identity to witness to them, to share the love of Jesus with them in these days to come.